So uh, today we are going to discuss about polarization. Uh, up to now we have seen what is plane wave, uh, the theory behind plane wave we have seen and three types of wave we have seen, plane wave, uh, the spherical wave, cylindrical wave, those we have seen and we have, we have said that uh, the wave uh, that we are going to consider is the plane wave because it is easy for analysis. So, our the fields, electric field and magnetic field E and B, they are describing a plane wave. So, with that we will start discussing about uh, polarization, what is meant by polarization of the fields when the fields are describing a plane wave or when we have a plane wave, what is meant by polarization and the theory behind the polarization, that is what we are going to see. So, uh, when E and B, they describe a plane wave, then their magnitude can differ by a factor C. Uh, the relationship between E and B that we know, they are related by a factor C. So, their magnitude of E and B, magnitudes, they differ by a factor C. C is the speed of light that we know. And we know this relationship E is equal to C into B. Therefore, then also we know the scalar product of E and B is equal to 0. That is, E and B are orthogonal to each other. That we know. So, if they are orthogonal to each other, then if we know behavior of one uh, of the fields, either E or B, then uh, the other is same except that it is orthogonal because E is equal to C into B and E and B are orthogonal. So once we know the behavior of one field, the behavior of other field we can easily find out. Now these plane waves, these E and B, they are spatio-temporal waves, which means they depend on time and space. So if we fix the position, at a fixed position, these vectors will move with time. Once you fix the position, they will move with time. At a fixed time, if we fix the time, then they will move over space. At that time, over space, they will move. So knowing the variation of E is enough. Why? Because E and C are orthogonal to each other and E is related to B with a factor of C. So knowing only E, the variation of E. Variation of E means variation of E with respect to time or with respect to space or with respect to time and space. So once we know that variation of E, that is enough because that variation is same for B. The polarization, now comes the polarization. Polarization, this describes the variation of E at a fixed position. If we fix the position, then how the um, field E is varying at a fixed position. It is varying means it is varying with time. So how E varies with time at a fixed position, that describes the polarization. Or polarization describes the time variation. This will be actual time variation. Time variation of E at a fixed position. The locus of the tip of the E, E is a vector. So tip of this vector, the locus of the tip of this vector E, that will give the type of the polarization. So uh, depending on what will be the locus, we will get the polarization. Now let us try to formulate it. We already have seen that the general solution for plane wave is E is equal to a real part of E0 into exponential j k dot r minus omega t, assuming that uh, everything is here what we have assumed. We have assumed that it is a monochromatic wave 
or it is a time harmonic wave that is what we have assumed and it is a plane wave. E0, what is E0? E0 is a complex vector and E0 lies in the plane which contains E and B. So that is other thing. Then this can be if it is lying in a plane, it is a vector and it lies in a plane. Any vector can be resolved into two components. So we can resolve E0 into two components. So in the plane E0, we resolve it into a horizontal component EH and a vertical component EV. So <coughs> we can write in terms of its component E0, we can write E0 is equal to H cap EH exponential JVH plus V cap EV exponential JVV. Now what is this? What is H cap and what is V cap? H cap is the unit vector along the horizontal component. V cap is the unit vector along the vertical component. VH is the phase of the horizontal component. PV is the phase of the vertical component. So this equation we can rewrite by taking EH common. This will be EH cap into EH plus V cap into EV exponential j v, v minus v h whole into exponential j v h. Okay. Now let us write v, v minus v h to be equal to delta. So if you take v, v minus v h to be equal to delta, then E0, we can write it as so, uh, the magnitude of E0 will be from this also you can write this is written in the component form. So magnitude of E0 is square root of its components. Components are E H square plus C V square. So E0 is that. So we can now write E as E is equal to vector E is equal to real part of E0 H cap into E1 plus V cap into E2 into e to the uh, exponential j delta into whole into exponential j k dot r minus omega t plus phi h. So that is how we can write e, which implies that e is equal to real part of h cap e h plus v cap e v e to the power z delta into e to the power z k dot r minus omega t plus phi h. So from comparing these two, we can also write E is equal to real part of E0 into H cap E1 plus V cap E2 e to the power Z delta into e to the power J K dot R minus omega T plus V H. This is the same thing from these two comparing these two, we can find out what is E1 and what is E2. E1 just compare these two equations. Then E1 is equal to EH into e to the power j v h by E0. E2 is equal to EV into e to the power j v v by E0. So these are what is E1 and E2. So if I write E in terms of E1, E2, so E1 will be in terms of EH. It will be EH e to the power j v h by E0. E2 will be EV into e to the power j v v by E0. E0. Then E1 square plus E2 square is equal to 1. Now, why we are writing it in this term? Because we are normalizing it. E0, <coughs> if you normalize it with respect to E0, then E1 square plus E2 square is equal to 1. That is why we are doing this. Then we also know for plane wave, if the wave vector is k, then k dot e is equal to 0, k dot b is equal to 0. So k dot e is equal to 0. If k dot e is equal to 0, each component of e will be when they will take this dot product with k, that will be 0. So k dot e h will be equal to k dot e v will be equal to e h dot e v. Why e h dot e v? Because e h and e v are vertical and horizontal component. They are orthogonal to each other. So E H dot E V, so all these will be equal to 0. All these are orthogonal to each other. So these are all orthogonal vectors. 
then we define the polarization vector. Polarization vector P is equal to real part of H cap E1 plus V cap E2 into E to the power Z delta whole into exponential minus J omega T. So what we have it has is the time variation of E to the power J omega T. So time harmonic variation is there. Then the field normalized field, the horizontal component and vertical component of the normalized fields and the vertical component, the phase difference in the vertical component from the horizontal component that is there is the by J delta. Now locus of the tip of this uh, polarization vector, this will have the same form as that of the electric field E. So if you compare the locus of the tip of the vector E and locus of the tip of the polarization vector P, both will describe the same vector or same uh, locus or same chord. Then now let us come to this P we have seen is equal to real part of H cap E1 plus V cap E2 exponential J delta into whole into exponential minus J omega T. So let us put that in the form of a graph. If we put that in the form of a graph, then P will be H cap cos omega T, H cap E1 cos omega T plus V cap E2 cos minus omega t plus delta which will be equal to h cap th plus v cap ev. What is ph? How, what is ph? ph is equal to e1 cos omega t so that will be the horizontal component of the polarization vector. So horizontal component of the polarization vector is ph which is equal to e1 cos omega t. So look at the figure. In the figure, we have polarization vector P. Its horizontal component is E1 cos omega T along the H axis. Along the V axis, it will have the vertical vector. So uh, uh, vertical component of the polarization vector, that will be E2 cos omega T plus delta. Uh, so uh, that will be what is so pH is equal to E1 cos omega t. Now cos omega t, if you look at cos omega t, what, how do you define cos omega t? Cos omega t will be pH by E1. So because pH is equal to E1 cos omega t, so cos omega t will be pH by E1. From that we can say sin omega t is equal to root over of 1 minus cos square omega t. So cos square omega t is pH, square, pH by E1 square. So sine omega t is equal to square root of 1 minus pH by E1 square. Then PV is equal to E2 cos minus omega t plus delta. So E2 is equal to cos minus omega t plus delta which is equal to E2. Then cos delta minus omega t that if we expand that will be cos omega t cos delta plus sin omega t sin delta. So E2 into cos omega t cos delta plus sin omega t sin delta. Um, now cos omega t cos delta plus sin omega t sin delta, that we can write now from this equation as P V by E2. So that is P V by E2. Cos omega t is equal to pH by E1. So pH by E1 into cos delta plus sin omega t we have found out root over of 1 minus pH by E1 square. So root over of 1 minus pH by E1 square. That into sin delta is equal to PV by E2. So ultimately we can write it in this form pH by E1 cos delta minus PV by E2 is equal to minus square root of 1 minus pH by E1 square into sine delta. So sine delta term is on one side, cos term is on other side. Now, 
if I take the square of both the sides of this equation, that equation, if I take the square on both the sides, then left side is pH by E1 cos delta minus P V by E2. So its whole square will be, right side will be, square root will go. So that will be 1 minus pH by E1 square into sine will be sine square delta. So just squaring that we get this. So that we can write as pH by E1 square into sine square delta plus cos square delta. This just we are rearranging the terms. So on the left hand side we have pH by E1. So pH by E1 square cos square delta. On the right hand side we have pH by E1 square sine square delta. So from the right hand side you take it to left hand side. So and pH by E1 square we take common. So pH by E1 square will be common sine square delta plus cos square delta. Then minus uh, two times pH by E1 into PV by E2 into cos delta. Then plus PV by E2 whole square is equal to sine square delta. Sine square delta plus cos square delta is 1. So pH by E1 square minus 2 pH by E1 into PV by E2 cos delta plus PV by E2 square is equal to sine square delta. Now this equation is the general equation of an ellipse this pH by E1 square minus 2 pH by E1 PV by E2 cos delta plus PV by E2 square is equal to sine square delta. That is the general equation of an ellipse. It has a semi-major axis. Any general ellipse will have a semi-major axis. Let us say the semi-major axis is A. B is its semi-minor axis. Tau is the tilt angle of the ellipse. So you see the ellipse is general ellipse uh, on the figure. A is the semi-major axis of the ellipse. B is the semi-minor axis of the ellipse. Tau is the tilt angle of the ellipse. So based on that, this, this is the general equation. So uh, A1, uh, A, A will be E1, B will be E2 delta will be tau on the tilt angle, something like this. <clears throat> now let us consider special case. First special case is the linear polarization. From this we will get the polarization. That equation, this equation gives us the locus of the tip of the polarization vector. This is the equation for locus of the tip of the polarization vector. Let us first consider the special case which gives us the linear polarization. So pH by E1 square minus 2 pH by E1 PV by E2 cos delta plus PV by E2 whole square, square is equal to sine square delta. This is my starting equation. So let me take delta is equal to 0. If delta is equal to 0, sine delta is equal to 0, sine square delta is equal to 0. Cos delta is equal to 1. So this equation now becomes pH by E1 minus 2 pH by E1 PV by E2 plus PV by E2 square is equal to 0. So this is equal same as the pH by, by E1 minus PV by E2 whole square is equal to 0. Since this is equal to that, which means PV by E2 is equal to pH by E1 or PV is equal to E2 by E1 pH, which is the equation of a straight line with a slope E2 by E1. So E2 is equal to 0, suppose E2 is equal to 0. If E2 is equal to 0, then this is horizontal or this is called parallel linear polarization. If E1 is equal to 0, then this is called vertical or um, perpendicular linear polarization. E2 is equal to 0 means the line will be the, it will be a straight line which is horizontal, which is parallel to the H axis. If E1 is equal to 0, it will be vertical, it will be a straight line, the locus will be a straight line which is vertical or parallel to the V axis. 
So this is called the first one is called horizontal polarization. Second one is called vertical polarization. And these are linear polarization. Why linear polarization? Because it is a straight line. Then we will come to the second case, uh, second special case, which is called the elliptical polarization. The second special case is called the elliptical polarization. Now in this case, in the case of elliptical polarization, uh, we start with the same equation, pH by E1 square minus 2 pH by E1 PV by E2 cos delta plus PV by E2 square is equal to sine square delta. We start with this equation. Here, and delta is equal to either plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2. So this is the special cases. Delta is equal to plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2. So delta is equal to plus minus pi by 2. So in either case, whether delta is plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2, you uh, sine square delta is equal to 1. Sine delta is equal to plus minus 1. So sine square delta will be 1. Cos delta will be 0. So in that case, pH by E1 square plus PV by E2 square is equal to 1. This is the equation of a ellipse. So this is yeah, the equation of a ellipse that we know. So this is equation of an ellipse. The uh, when E1 is not equal to E2, that is the case condition. Condition is E1 is not equal to E2. This is the equation of an ellipse. Then there are two cases here. Look at the ellipse. The ellipse can be rotated or can be oriented in a left direction or in the right direction. So depending on whether it is rotating in the left direction or in the right direction, delta, depending on delta, it will be delta is equal to plus pi by 2. It will rotate in the right direction, delta is equal to minus pi by 2 it will rotate in the left direction. So depending on which direction it is rotating, this is called left hand elliptical polarization or right hand elliptical polarization. So if it is rotating in a clockwise direction, then it is called right hand elliptical polarization. If it is rotating in a anti-clockwise direction, it is called left hand elliptical polarization. So it the locus is ellipse and the rotation of the tip is uh, clockwise. It is called right hand elliptical polarization. Locus is ellipse. The rotation is in the anti-clockwise direction. Then it is called left hand elliptical polarization. And then the Third special case is called the circular polarization. In this case, E1 is equal to E2 is equal to E. So both E1 is equal to E2. If E1 is equal to E2, then ellipse becomes a circle. So this is the specialty. E1 is equal to E2 is equal to E. Delta is equal to plus minus pi by 2. Then we will get a circle. Because pH square plus PV square will be square. So this will give us a circle as the uh, locus. So if that gives us a circle as the locus, if that gives us a circle as the locus, then the sense of rot rotation will be again like the ellipse. It can be right hand circularly polarized or left hand circularly polarized. Right hand circularly polarized means the rotation of the tip is in the clockwise direction. Left hand circularly polarized means the rotation of the tip is in the anti-clockwise direction. So depending on that, we can get right hand circularly polarized uh, wave or left hand circularly polarized wave. So these are the polarizations. So we have seen three types of polarization. 
linear polarization linear polarization has two types uh, two categories which is vertical linear polarization or horizontal linear polarization if these two are not there then this will be generally linearized polarization then elliptical polarization left and elliptical polarization right and elliptical polarization then we have circular polarization right hand circular polarization and left hand circular polarization now all let us look at the sense of polarization in a little bit detail they a detailed discussion of the sense of polarization so suppose delta is equal to pi by 2 delta can be plus minus pi by 2 let us take delta is equal to plus pi by 2 if delta is equal to plus pi by 2 then cos omega t plus delta is cos omega t plus pi by 2 that is called to minus sin omega t so cos omega t plus delta is equal to minus sin omega t so if you look at the figure in the figure the uh, horizontal line will be ph component will be ph is equal to e cos omega t pb will be e cos omega t plus delta which is minus e sin omega t so the vertical line will be minus e sin omega t now consider what happens when omega t is equal to 0 uh, or when omega t is equal to 0 what will happen when omega t is equal to 0 then the orientation will be along the horizontal axis look at the figure from the figure you can find out what will be the orientation when omega t is equal to 0 sin omega t is equal to sin omega t omega t is equal to 0 sin 0 is 0 so no vertical component cos omega t so omega t is equal to 0 cos omega t is equal to 1 only horizontal component so the orientation is along the horizontal axis that you can see from the figure left hand figure you see the orientation of the electric field is along the horizontal axis similarly when omega t is equal to pi by 2 when omega t is equal to pi by 2 sin omega t is equal to 0 i'm uh, sorry sin omega t is equal to 1 but cos omega t is equal to 0 so cos omega t is equal to 0 means there is no vertical component but sin omega t is equal to 1 so uh, the vertical component uh, sorry uh, cos omega t is equal to 0 means there is no horizontal component but sin omega t is equal to 1 so pb is equal to minus sin omega t so it will be in the negative v direction so it will be in the, in the negative v direction that you can see here in the left hand figure you can see the orientation is or the sense is in the negative uh, v uh, vertical direction not in the positive vertical direction it is in the vertical direction but it is in the negative uh, direction not in the positive not in the upward it will be downward so as you go from omega t is equal to 0 to omega t is equal to pi by 2 you are moving from horizontal to the downward direction so omega t is equal to r pi which is r is between 0 and pi by 2 it will be somewhere in the middle so that way you are going to move in the clockwise direction so when delta is equal to pi by 2 the rotation is clockwise so you will have a clockwise rotation when delta is equal to pi by 2 uh, when delta is equal to minus pi by 2 cos omega t plus delta is cos omega t minus pi by 2 that is sin omega t if if it is sin omega t then again we can go to the same procedure when omega t is equal to 0 you can now see that omega t is equal to 0 sin omega t will be 0 no vertical component only we will have horizontal component then omega t is equal to pi by 2 then cos omega t will be zero no horizontal component will have only vertical component so as you move from 
zero to pi by two. So you are moving to from the horizontal line to the vertical line, positive vertical line, upward line, which means the rotation is in the anti-clockwise direction. So when omega t or delta, sorry, when delta is equal to minus pi by two, the sense of polarization is anti-clockwise. If it is anti-clockwise, then it is called the uh, left hand circular polarization when it is clockwise it is called the right hand circular polarization why it is called left hand circular polarization and why it is called right hand circular polarization answer is very simple take your right hand curl your fingers and extend your thumb the thumb is the direction of propagation and curled fingers are the sense of rotation. So based on that, the, the sense of rotation is uh, um, when the wave is propagating away from you, the sense of rotation is uh, along the curl direction, then it is the right hand propagation. Similarly, take the left, left hand, if it is coming towards you, then it is left hand propagation. So this is about the sense of polarization, um, left hand prop circular polarization, right hand circular polarization, or left hand elliptical polarization, and right hand pro elliptical polarization. So uh, to be more clear, if the wave is, when you are looking at the wave, which is propagating away from you and it is rotating the sense of rotation is in the clockwise direction then it is called right hand propagation when it is rotating away when it is propagating away from you and the sense of rotation is in the anti clockwise direction then it is called left hand propagation. So, then we will come to the measure of polarization. How you are going to measure the polarization? One we have to describe what is polarization we describe. Then we describe what are the types of polarization how to quantify polarization and uh, how, how to describe the polarization. We describe what is polarization vector started with uh, plane wave. Then we said what is polarization vector from the plane wave equation. We found out a polarization vector. Then we said the sense of polarization um, uh, is the rotation of the or the most of time variation of the tip of the polarization vector. Then we describe three types of polarization, the linear polarization, the elliptical polarization, and the circular polarization. Then we discussed about the sense of polarization, left hand or right hand. Uh, for circular or elliptical polarization, we discussed about left hand and right hand. So now, uh, how to measure the polarization? Uh, so to measure the polarization, <coughs> we uh, discuss or we describe different parameters. The polarization can be measured in terms of different parameters. The, there are different parameters we'll discuss. Uh, each of them uh, separately. First, we'll discuss the wave parameter. The polarization can be discussed in terms of wave parameters. What are the wave parameters? The, the general equation is a, for the polarization uh, vector. The general equation is of an ellipse. So ellipse has a major axis, ellipse has a minor axis, and it has a tilt angle. Tilt angle is the angle of the major axis with respect to the um, uh, x-axis. So that is what is tilt angle. 
So the wave parameters are the tilt angle. Tilt angle will be between uh, what? What is the uh, angle? Um, what is the range of tilt angle? It will be between 0 to pi. Tilt angle tau should be between 0 to pi. It will be max minimum will be 0, maximum will be pi. Max but apparently it appears to be tau should be from 0 to 2 pi but why we are taking pi? It should be between 0, less than equal to tau, less than equal to pi. Why tau will be between 0 and pi? Not 2 pi, 0 and 2 pi. It should complete rotation would be 2 pi. Why half a rotation? The reason is it because of the symmetry. If you continue from pi to 2 pi, it will describe the same thing as 0 to pi. So that will be there will be no difference. So there is no point in taking from 0 to 2 pi, it will be 0 to pi, because 0 to 2 pi uh, is 0 to pi plus then pi to 2 pi, pi to 2 pi is same as 0 to pi. So that will describe the same thing, it will be just repeated. So instead of repeating it, we restrict it from 0 to pi. Then the second parameter for the wave is axial parameter. Second wave parameter is the axial parameter. If you have circular position, the uh, sorry, axial ratio, AR, uh, is the circular, is the axial ratio is the second wave parameter. So what is axial ratio? That is the ratio of this major axis and minor axis. For circular polarization, A is equal to B. Major axis is equal to minor axis. So, major axis and minor axis are equal, then axial ratio is equal to 1, AR is equal to 1. That is one limit on the uh, axial ratio. A is equal to B, when A is equal to B, AR is equal to 1. Then if you have linear polarization, in linear polarization means either A is equal to 0 or B is equal to 0. Let us take B is equal to 0. So it will be along A only. So we will squeeze, the B will be squeezed to 0. So if B is squeezed to 0, then A by B, B is equal to 0, A by B is equal to infinity. So for minor axis, the minor axis vanishes. For linear polarization, B is equal to 0. So axial ratio is equal to A by B or A by 0, which is equal to infinity. So axial ratio is infinity. So what are the limits on axial ratio? Axial ratio will be between 1 and infinity. So 1 is less than equal to axial ratio is less than equal to infinity. So that is the second wave parameter. Then the convention of sense of polarization. Because we have two types of polarization, right hand polarization or left hand polarization. Conventionally we take right hand polarization is positive here left hand polarization is negative AR, like positive axial ratio and negative axial ratio. Now you can say we are, we are taking axial ratio to be between 1 and infinite which is always positive. So those we, you take as plus minus 1 to plus minus infinity. If you take axial ratio to be positive, then it is called right hand polarized. If you take axial ratio to be negative, then it is called left hand polarized. So that, that is the convention. So that is not the value of axial ratio, but is the convention. Actually value will be the magnitude of that. So these are this is these are the wave parameter. What are the wave parameters? Tilt angle, axial ratio, and the convention on the sense of polarization. Then we will come to the elliptical parameter. That is the second part. Elliptical parameter is the electric field about the um, electric component. So electrical parameter is E2 by E1. These are the two components for vertical and horizontal component. So E2 by E1, that is one electrical parameter. 
then the second electrical parameter is the delta that is the phase difference between the uh, horizontal and vertical component that is the second parameter delta delta will be between my phase difference is naturally between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 that is the phase difference uh, so those are the uh, limits on the uh, 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 measures of the angle now let us come back to the wave parameters uh, how will define so we know tau now define epsilon epsilon is equal to let us define epsilon as cot inverse of plus minus axial ratio so tau wave parameters will be tau and epsilon tau is one then epsilon that we define as cot inverse of plus minus AR actual ratio then electrical parameters in terms of measure of polarization in terms of angles then electrical parameters are delta is angle that we know like in wave parameters we know tau is angle then we define another angle as epsilon which is cot inverse plus minus AR Similarly, for electrical parameters, we know delta is an angle. We know delta is an angle. Then we define another angle, gamma, which is tan inverse of E2 by E1. Now, we will convert electrical parameter to wave parameter because these are the same parameters, parameters for uh, the polarization. So, both should give us the same thing. So, let us come, uh, they should be equivalent. So electrical parameter to wave parameter, converting electrical parameter to wave parameter. The conversion is this way. Cos 2 gamma is equal to cos 2 epsilon into cos 2 tau. This is electrical to wave parameter. And tan delta is equal to tan 2 epsilon by sine 2 tau. This is the conversion. Similarly, wave parameter to electrical parameter this conversion is tan to tau is equal to tan to gamma into cos delta and sin to epsilon is equal to sin to gamma into sin delta derivation is not necessary for this so we don't require the derivation of the conversion from electrical to wave or wave to electrical parameter just remember this formula cos 2 gamma is equal to cos 2 epsilon into cos 2 tau tan delta is equal to tan 2 epsilon by sin 2 tau tan 2 tau is equal to tan 2 gamma cos delta sin 2 epsilon is equal to sin 2 gamma sin delta just remember this Then what are the range of these angles, the parameters in terms of angle if you define? What are the range of the angle? First is tau. Tau we have already seen. Tau range is, it is from 0 to pi. So 0 less than equal to tau less than equal to pi. So beyond pi, the shape will repeat so we don't go to 2 pi. Then epsilon is equal to cot inverse of plus minus the axial ratio magnitude of axial ratio is between 1 and infinity so axial ratio is equal to plus minus 1 so if you put that then epsilon is equal to plus minus pi by 2 axial ratio is equal to infinity then epsilon is equal to 0 so minus pi by 4 is less than equal to epsilon will be less than equal to pi by 4 so that will be the range for epsilon then delta is the phase difference between e1 and e2 so since it is the phase difference therefore we already have seen 0 will be less than equal to delta will be less than equal to pi or you can say minus pi by 2 if you are considering the sense of polarization we take it as the minus pi by 2 is less than equal to delta is less than equal to pi by 2 total range is pi 
So minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 is range is pi. So a minus pi by 2 to 0 will be left hand, 0 to pi by 2 will be right hand. So then that is why we take it in this way. Then gamma is equal to tan inverse of e2 by e1. So 0 tan inverse of e2 by e1 that shows that 0 will be less than equal to gamma will be less than equal to pi depending on the value of tau. So with that we come to the end of polarization discussion on polarization. So we will stop here. We don't have the point cast sphere. So I will not go into point cast sphere. We will stop with the discussion on polarization. So hopefully we will stop here on polarization. Next class we will discuss about the reflection, reflection that discussion will start in the next class when you come after the lunch. Okay, correct.